Alright then my friends, so the only real thing left to do right here I think is to sync this up to Firestore so that we're listening to the documents in our collection over here, so these things, because that's what we want to show over here on the dashboard but also in my projects as well. So I want to now set our application up to grab these documents using a real-time listener and by real-time listener I mean that whenever a new project is added to this database our project over here is going to be listening to that and it's going to just pop up a new project over here when that happens. Now we don't need to refresh the page to do that or send an additional request. It's just going to appear there as it happens over here. And that's what I mean by a real-time listener. And that's one of the cool things about Firestore. It can do this on the fly. So then, this is not going to be a real in-depth tutorial about Firestore and real-time listeners. I do have a whole series with about 12 videos or something like that on this YouTube channel all about Firestore and I cover real-time listeners inside that series in much more depth but I will give you a brief overview of what's going on here and how to set it up. Okay then so to the code we need to do this in two different components the dashboard here and my project so let's start with the dashboard because we show them all here. So then let's open up that component dashboard and we'll keep those there for a second but what we want to do is now hook up to Firestore so first of all we need to import the database from here right so import db from and it's this file right here remember fb so it's at to get the project root the source folder and then forward slash fb so we're importing that now we can use this to set up a real-time listener to the database now where do we want to do this in our component well, think about it. We want to do this as soon as this component loads, as soon as it's created. So we can access a lifecycle hook from Vue.js called created, and we can define that down here, like so. And inside this lifecycle hook, this code is going to fire as soon as this component is first created. So when we first load it up in the browser, it's created the component. Then we're going to set up that real-time listener straight away and retrieve the documents, right? So then, inside this hook, first of all, we need to say db.collection and then reference the project collection inside because that's what we want to listen to. And the way we set up a real-time listener is by just using one method called on snapshot, like so. Now, on snapshot is basically a hook to Firestore, which is saying, okay, I'm looking at this collection right now, this project collection. Now, when there's a change, I want to receive that as a snapshot. I want to receive a snapshot of the database back as a response. And then I can look at that response, that snapshot, and see what's changed and update my application appropriately. So we can add an ES6 arrow function in here. And that arrow function is going to take the response as a parameter. So we'll just say res and then open up this arrow function. And inside what we want to do is we want to find what has changed inside the Firestore. And the way we do that is by saying const changes is equal to the response that we get dot doc changes. So these doc changes are basically the documents that have been changed in the Firestore when we receive this snapshot update. So every time something changes in our Firestore database inside this collection, we're going to receive this new snapshot, this response and then any changes which have occurred inside the documents are going to be received here. Now that could be added changes or removed changes or modified changes. At the minute, we're only concerned with added changes, right? So has a document been added? Because if it has, we want to add it to our front end, our UI. So we need to check if any of these changes that we get back is an added type. So now we have this list of changes right here. We can cycle through them. We can say changes dot for each, and we're going to fire a function for each individual change. So the for each method cycles through this list of changes, and we take back each time it goes through that list, that individual change it's cycling through. So inside this function, we can do something with that change. We want to check its type. Now we can say if and we can say change.type. Now, each change has a type property from Firestore, and this type property is either gonna be added, removed, or modified, okay? Because those are the three things that can happen inside our Firestore database. We can remove data, modify data, just change it, 
or add it. So we want to check for add it. Has something been added? So let's say, is this equal to add it? Because if it is, then what we want to do is add this to our projects. Now, what I'm going to do is remove all of the stuff inside the projects because initially we don't have any. We want to retrieve them all from the database and then populate this project object with those things. So let us now do that. We're saying if the change type is added, then what we want to do is say this dot project, which is accessing this property right here. And we want to push this new document onto this array right here if it's an added type. So how do we actually get the document data? Because this at the minute is just the change. Now we want the data, the stuff stored in each document. So we get that by pushing on a new object to here. Remember we had objects before, so we're just pushing on a new object right here. And this object is gonna represent that project. And what we need to do is use the spread operator. I'll explain this in a minute. We get the current change that we're iterating over this thing right here, we access the actual document. So the things stored, remember, these are all individual documents. So for example, say this has been just added, we receive this back over here as a change, the type is added, we want to retrieve the actual document now. So not just the change, the document. So we can say the change dot doc to get that. And then we get the data from that document by using the data method. And that retrieves us this stuff right here okay so we're getting that all those properties and we're spreading those properties right which takes all those individual properties the content the title and stuff like that and it spreads them into this new object so that we have those properties now inside this object as well the title the content the person the due date etc all right now the reason i did that and didn't just say okay this dot projects dot push this thing instead of a new object and then spread these is because I also want to push the ID onto this. It's always a good idea to have the ID associated right here as well, because we need to use an ID or something like that when we have this key. We could use the title, but occasionally a title could be the same. So I'm going to add the ID of the document, this thing right here into this object as well. So that if we want to, we can use that. And if in the future we want to delete that from the front end, we have the ID of that document so we can reference it. Okay. So always a good idea to get the ID. So I'm going to do a comma. The next property is going to be the ID that I add onto this, which we can get from change dot doc dot ID. And that is going to get us this thing right here. So dot data, the method gets us the actual data dot ID from the document gets us the auto generated ID right here. Cool. So we're taking that project now and we're pushing it to this array. So for every type added, it's being pushed right here. Now then, this is when the database is being changed. So you might be thinking, well, okay, this stuff is already here. So when we first load up the browser, nothing's being changed. So we're not actually going to receive those changes and therefore we're not pushing anything to the project array. So surely we're not going to see anything here. But no, that's wrong because when we first load up the application and we first initialize Firebase on the front end and we first set up this uh, real time listener, then it's going to look at the Firestore database and it's going to say, OK, I'm looking at this with a new pair of eyes, a brand new pair of eyes, because the person has just come to this website and this component has just been created. So when this first fires, every time we load up the website, it's going to look at this with a fresh pair of eyes and say, I have not seen this yet. OK, this is the first time I've seen these documents since you've refreshed or since you've loaded the page. So I'm going to treat these things as added types because I'm assuming they've been added and I want to see them inside the website. So the first time we load up, it treats all of the current documents as added types, right, as if they've been changed. So to begin with, we grab all of them and we push all of them to the project array. So then let's save this cross our fingers and hope this works. And now we can see we have five right here. And these are the things that are stored right here. OK, so that's cool. That's working. Now we need to do the same thing inside my projects because we still have the dummy data. So all we need to do is exactly the same as this. So let's copy that and go to where is it? Projects go down here. And instead of all this stuff right here, we want to delete that to begin with. And then we 
come under the computed properties, create the created hook. We're doing exactly the same. We're setting up a snapshot inside this component when it's first created. Every time there's a change, we're getting a new document change right here, adding that to the projects. And again, when we first load this component and when this first loads, it's treating everything as added. So to begin with, we should see everything in the Firestore collection. Now remember, we only want to show projects by the Net Ninja, so we're still outputting my projects and not everything. So that's fine, we should only see things by the Net Ninja, but let's save this and see if it works. So over here, now we can see we have absolutely nothing. So let's see what's going on. Do we have anything by the Net Ninja? So we have person the Net Ninja right there. Is this working? I'm just gonna refresh over here just in case it didn't catch that change. And we still don't see anything. Okay, so let's open up the console. A bit of a debugging here for us. And we do have an error. So let's have a look at what that error is. Scoot this up. And of course, database is not defined because we've not imported it over here. Schoolboy error. So import DB from, and it's at forward slash FB for Firebase. This thing right here, remember? Save that now. Now hopefully this is gonna work. There we go. Second time around, we get these two projects right here, which are by the Net Ninja. Awesome. So let me now go to the dashboard and let's try this one more time. I'm gonna call this my last project. Hopefully the last time I'm gonna add something here and it's gonna be just as interesting as all the other projects. And the due date is gonna be the 29th of November. Add this project. Waza, we get that and we get it down here. So that's the real-time listener in effect. It's automatically added it to the bottom down here. We've not had to make a, an additional request to go and retrieve that. It's just brought it for us. And also now if I go to my project, it's gonna be there as well. Whoop, whoop. Okay, and we can still order these. Everything still works. The menu still works. Awesome. So there we go, my friends. That is uh, pretty much it, I suppose. I know we've not delved into Firestore too much, but again, I didn't want to. I wanted the focus to be on Beautify, but like I said, I do have Firestore tutorials on this channel if you want to extend this further.